Hey everybody, it's Dan. Welcome to Weld Fever. On today's episode, we're going to tackle a little flux core welding, also known as gasless MIG by some. Anyway, stick with me. Here we go. Okay, before we get started today, I just want to take a minute to remind you all that we do sell these Weld Fever caps and Weld Fever sticker on our store at weldfever.com and then just click the store icon right in the middle. Right now, since we've just begun Well Fever Wednesday, we're going to have a special on these. $14.99 gets you one of these. It's a little bit of a sale discount price over what we normally sell them for. On the Well Fever Wednesday special, just make sure to visit and click on this and put in the promo code WEDNESDAY. WEDNESDAY is the promo code for this and we will send this to you for $14.99. That's the special sale price and we'll include a free sticker. But if you want stickers by themselves, you can also purchase those online as well. Okay, I want to direct your attention to the wire itself. Now, I happen to have a spool of Lincoln Electric wire. Now, of course, there are many other brands out there, but this is what I have on hand, so I'm going to describe this one. Okay, the first of all, it's important that you understand that the AWS designation for this kind of hollow tube uh, wire is E71T-11. So there are many manufacturers and they all call them something different. It's their trade names, but the AWS designation is E71T-11. Lincoln Electric happens to call this particular type of wire NR211MP. You can see that right here, NR211MP. Uh, the MP is very important. That stands for multi-pass. If you do not have this MP on your particular flux core, or if your flux core uh, says SP, which is single pass, then that means you cannot weld more than one pass with that particular wire. So if you stack another bead on top of it, you will have problems. It will fail eventually. So make sure if you're going to weld bead after bead that it says MP for multi-pass. The other thing I want to direct your attention to is right over here. This is the maximum thickness this particular wire, which happens to be an 030 NR211, is rated for a maximum of 5 16 in thickness. Now what that means, very clearly and very plainly, is that you are not to weld thicker than 5 16 of an inch material with this, no matter how many passes you do on it. That's the one exception to the rule. Usually your machines will give you an idea of the thickness you can weld in a single pass, this is telling you 5 16 is the maximum. And if you need to weld thicker than that, you need to go to a different type of a wire. That's all you can do on this one. Very important. Most people overlook that all the time. Okay, to start off, we're just going to go ahead and do a quick bead uh, doing some flux core. You might notice that I do not have a standard MIG nozzle on there. Uh, it's not necessary since there's no shielding gas and that's what that nozzle is for. But instead I have a little protector there for the contact tip. Uh, important to try to protect that contact tip from all the uh, spatter and especially the threaded area where the contact tip uh, meets the contact tip body. Uh, just doing a nice and easy back and forth kind of side to side motion as I go down as straight as I can uh, down the path. Okay, and real quick, this is the result of our weld. Not too bad. Okay, for the uh, next weld, we're going to go back to the tried and true uh, square tubing. Everybody loves square tubing because it's so versatile and so many projects are made with it. So that's why we go ahead and continue to do it. It seems to be a popular thing on uh, Weld Fever, and uh, I want to give what the audience wants. Anyhow, we start off by tacking all four corners, as you can see here. Uh, it's a relatively simple procedure. Just got to make sure you put enough downward pressure so that the opposite sides don't lift up when you do it. Uh, and you also have to make sure that you have a substantial enough tack so that uh, you know everything uh, stays in place once it's down. You don't want it to lift up. Uh, also, you'll notice I'm hitting it with a little bit of wire brush after I'm done uh, uh, administering the tacks. Remember, of course, flux core does leave slag and that slag has to be cleaned off before you weld over it otherwise you're likely to trap that slag underneath your freshly applied weld. 
All right, so now that we have our tax in place, we're going to go ahead and uh, perform a weld here. This is actually a flare bevel weld since we have one edge that's uh, meeting into a kind of a rounded edge there. And this is like just the videos that we've done in the past, uh, only on this particular one, you cannot push with flux core. You have to pull with it. And the old saying goes, if it has slag, you must drag, and that's exactly what this has. So you have to make sure that you're always pulling and never pushing, otherwise you will trap slag and have a not-so-pleasing weld as a result. This went in, and went in rather smoothly, and uh, we were able to just go a slight side-to-side -side motion in order to get things the way we wanted it to, and I was pleased with it. Now we'll just go ahead and do the other side. Same thing. Go right in there, take our time, make sure the weld is fusing properly, make sure that it's penetrating properly. You don't want to rush the weld, but yet you don't want to stay so long that you end up building it up too high either. Uh, always keep your eye on the puddle and see what it's doing. If you see that it's penetrating a little too much and you might be in danger of blowing a hole into it, well then you got to speed it up and move. However, if you see that it's laying right on top and it's not actually sinking into the metal, meaning a lack of fusion and a lack of penetration, that means you have to do one of two things. Either you have to hold in there a little bit longer, or you might have to adjust your machine upwards in terms of its, uh, its heat value. Now keep this in mind, both on MIG and in flux core welding. If you need to increase the heat, if you need to increase the amperage, need to do it via your wire speed and not your voltage. Biggest mistake people make is they think that voltage is the key to raising the heat and it is not. Adjusting the voltage all that does is raises and lowers the arc length, nothing more. That raising and lowering of the arc length makes it so that the machine will run smoother based on your wire feed speed. But the first adjustment you should always make on any MIG, any wire feed welder is wire feed speed. Okay, continuing on, we're getting to some of the last of them here. This one is just like a T-joint, as we have done many times before. And again, you have to make sure that you get both sides uh, equally, both the top and the bottom, have to be applied in equal distance, equal length. Right here you see I had a little uh, foul up there, which is good. But you notice before I restarted, I cleaned it off. If you have a problem or if you have to stop for whatever reason and you have to restart, you must make sure when welding with flux core that you remove that slag before you begin again. If not, like just like before, you're in danger of trapping slag right under it. Anyhow, continuing on, this weld went in well, and it looks like I have an uh, equal amount of weld on both sides, top and bottom, and that's always what you're shooting for. Now we clean it up and look, and uh, it doesn't look too bad. Hey, thanks for joining us. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram, hashtag WeldFever. Also check us out on Facebook. It's uh, facebook.com uh, slash WeldFever. Make sure to rate and subscribe and uh, try to continue to uh, drum up support for us. We're looking to increase our viewership as we bring you a new show every Wednesday on WeldFever Wednesday. Bye-bye.